But in order to fully appreciate this fact, family, we must see the pot plot in the context of the broader chemical biological assault on the black man and woman. It's not an accident that you chase your weed, brother, with menthol cigarettes and alcohol. That ain't an accident. That after you finish smoking your weed, you chase it with a menthol cigarette. And while you smoking, you, you tipping a bottle. That ain't an accident. Before marijuana was ethnically weaponized, made an ethnic weapon, a weapon that affects one ethnic group to a higher degree that, than it affects any other ethnic group, weaponized marijuana has been made an ethnic weapon. But before marijuana was an ethnic weapon, tobacco actually was one of the first chemical weapons deliberately targeting the post-1960s urban black males. A landmark legal decision of 1998 forced big tobacco companies to release previously secret internal documents going back decades, documenting many of the ways that big tobacco companies, often with Jewish executives at the helm, targeted the black community in the 1960s and 1970s with a relentless advertising assault and literally conspired to coerce the adoption by black males in particular of a specific type of cigarette, menthol cigarettes. Menthol is a chemical compound that is the chief ingredient in peppermint oil. And it's used as an additive to Flavor cigarettes, it cools and numbs the throat, reducing the harshness of the cigarette and making it easier to inhale. Menthols were originally from the 1930s to the 1960s an affluent white woman's cigarette. How did you start chasing your weed down with Newports, bruh? How did that happen? There are approximately 42 million black people in this country. 30% of black adults reported tobacco use in 2015. 21% of black men smoke cigarettes. 13.3% of black women smoke cigarettes. 80% of black smokers smoke menthol cigarettes versus 30% of white smokers. You are four times more likely to smoke menthol brand cigarettes than your white counterpart is. This is because the tobacco industry deliberately, successfully, and at great financial expense to themselves, created a demand among inner city black males for menthol cigarettes that did not previously exist and an attachment to those cigarettes which till this day still resonates and resonates with severe consequences. Why target black men and women with menthol cigarettes? Slide, please. Because according to internal documents, companies like Lori Lard, who makes Newports, funded studies and thus knew back in the 1970s what these Penn State scientists are only now reporting in 2015. And what are they reporting? 
now that was known in 1970, higher, quote, higher concentrations of melanin, the color pigment in skin and hair, may be placing darker pigmented smokers at increased risk or increased susceptibility to nicotine dependence and tobacco-related carcinogens, cancer causers, than lighter-skinned smokers, according to scientists. It was known in the 1960s when big tobacco was targeting the black community that nicotine has a biochemical affinity for melanated tissues. That means nicotine seeks out and binds tightly to melanin pigments. The melanin that makes you black, that gives you black skin. Nicotine, they know the tobacco industry scientists knew in the 70s when they were targeting us that nicotine has a melanin affinity, an intense melanin affinity. It binds tightly to melanated tissues, lingers in the body, accumulates in the body, and spreads to other melanin tissues like the heart, the lungs, liver, and brain. When you add menthol to that cigarette. The menthol compound increases the body's absorption of nicotine. The higher levels of melanin in the skin, or the higher the levels of melanin in the skin, the greater the accumulation of nicotine and its cancer-causing compounds in the body. The darker you are, the more melanin you have. If you smoke just regular cigarettes, the more nicotine will be accumulating in your body. And if you smoke menthol cigarettes, that menthol increases the absorption of nicotine in your melanated body. And when the tobacco companies switched the target community of menthols from affluent white women to poor urban black males, these devils increased the nicotine content. According to their own documents, and then lied about it, thus, With all of our melanin, the 30% of black adults who are smokers have been potentially made into walking reservoirs or nicotine storage containers. And what are the consequences of our being targeted with this chemical, biological, ethnic weapon, the menthol cigarette? According to the CDC, smoking illness kills more black people than AIDS, car crashes, murder, drug and alcohol abuse combined. 45,000 preventable deaths a year. Smoking rates between black and white adults are comparable. Yet black men suffer the greatest burden of tobacco-related deaths of any racial or ethnic group in the United States. Black people smoke fewer cigarettes, take fewer puffs, but have a higher nicotine content in our body because of the melon and the menthol. It is predicted that 1.5 million African Americans, so-called African Americans, alive today, under the age of 18, will become regular tobacco users 
and 500,000 of them will die prematurely from tobacco-related illness. And if that is not bad enough, your enemy, brother, never wants to simply kill you and me. That ain't fun enough. He always wants to feminize us on the way to our grave. There you do. There you do. Always. Slide, please. And make sure it's up there, please. Before the THC and marijuana was lowering black men's testosterone and raising his estrogen, the nicotine and tobacco was doing the same thing, but through different mechanisms. THC interferes with testosterone production at its root in the brain by interfering with the release of the chemicals necessary to start the process. Nicotine, on the other hand, produces carbon monoxide in the blood, which travels to the testes and damages the laid egg cells, the cells that produce testosterone in the testicles. The nicotine produces the carbon monoxide that damages that process in the testicles. When you add menthol, menthol itself, menthol itself decreases testosterone levels in men. So the cigarette already, already lowers the testosterone. Then you add menthol to it that on its own lowers testosterone. You smoke it, you get in, your testosterone is getting double whacked by the nicotine and the menthol. But then you smoking that menthol after you just got lifted with some good kush. Do you see the problem? Or do you see and now understand the reality of how the, why the black man is a punk in the face of our 6,000 year enemy? Is it starting to make sense to us? It decreases the testosterone levels in men. In men. In men. On that note, sisters, I want to end this discussion today talking to and about you. Is that all right? Because 13.3% of you smoke cigarettes. And, you know, black girls talk too. You smoking marijuana in record numbers today. one of the first black people to own a legal dispensary because black folks are being, are systematically being locked out. There ain't no gold rush for you, bro. White men are cashing out on the legalization of marijuana, not you. They're not letting you bust into the legal industry. But the one black I think the first black person to own a dispensary is a black woman. Apparently, she didn't like what I had to say. I understand. You're smoking. 13.3% of black women, adult women, smoke cigarettes. When you add the token you do, with the smoking you do, all of this contributes to, with other causes, the fact that 56.6% .6 
of black women are obese. 56.6% of black women are obese. Cigarette smoking can cause weight gain and obesity. What's the connection, Brother Wesley? What's the relevance to that to our discussion today? I'm glad you asked that, sister. Just like marijuana, the cigarettes you smoke have the opposite effect on you than it does on him because, newsflash, men are not like women and women are not like men. See, I emphasize that point because on Breakfast Club, I didn't just say marijuana feminizes the black man. I said, and it masculinizes the black woman. And y'all ain't like that. And the objection was, well, it don't make sense. So why can it do one over here and do the opposite over there? Well, because gender physiology, you know that men are not like women and women are not like men. I don't care what them feminists are feeding you. While nicotine enhanced by menthol lowers testosterone and raises estrogen in him, by different processes, it is anti-estrogenic in you. It lowers your feminizing estrogen levels, and it raises your testosterone levels, like marijuana. And please understand, the ratio of testosterone to estrogen in the male, and the ratio of estrogen to testosterone in the female, these ratios determine gender body patterns. You follow me? The male body pattern ain't supposed to be like the female body pattern. I had to qualify that. This is 2017. Some of y'all sisters are jealous of the body shape of some of these young brothers today. Some of these young brothers have a body shape way more feminine than it used to be. It's hard to find a robust masculinity among the young brothers physiologically today. There's a reason for that. The ratios of testosterone to estrogen and estrogen to testosterone determines the, body, the gender body patterns. Do you follow me? Men are naturally tubular. And women are naturally curvy. That's done by these ratios. The estrogen in a female with normal, well, I ain't say anything wrong, did I? Yeah, yeah, no. Masculinity for men and femininity for women, that's how we do our Islam and Muhammad Ma. We are neither ashamed to emphasize his masculinity, nor are we ashamed to emphasize your Feminine. Ain't no transgendering up in here. The estrogen in a female with normal testosterone levels produces her characteristic low waist, high hip ratio. 
You follow? Low waist, high hip ratio. The estrogen uninhibited by excess testosterone produces that. Excess testosterone in the female causes the accumulation of fat cells around the waist area, producing abdominal gain, abdominal weight gain, and it inhibits the accumulation of fat cells in the hip region this produces, the excess testosterone produces a female with a high waist, low hip ratio. You follow? Normal estrogen and testosterone, low waist, high hip ratio. Low estrogen, high testosterone, high hip, low waist ratio. Do you follow? This hormonal inversion or changes caused by smoking thus results in changes in fat distribution that can make a female form either obese or more tubular like a male rather than curvy like a female. The nicotine can deepen your voice, increase your facial and body hair growth, and inhibit, interfere with estrogen signaling from your brain. Steve Harvey said, Think like a man, act like a lady. But these drugs or psychochemical ethnic weapons got women thinking like a man, acting like a man, and even looking like a man. While, while they got us thinking like a woman, behaving like a woman, and with your pants sagging and your butt out, looking like a damn woman. Now, of course, everybody isn't affected by marijuana and tobacco the same way or to the same degree at the same time. Diet matters, genetics matter, and lifestyle matters. But every time we puff, puff, pass, we open ourselves up to these effects. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the feminization of the black man and the masculinization of the black woman. Between the blunts that we smoke and the new ports that we chase it with, not to mention the alcohol, the black community has become the poster child for gender bending gone wild. 